Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS, hit the United States and became an epidemic in the 80s, rapidly claiming many souls in all walks of life. Once thought to only affect certain people, HIV and AIDS do not discriminate when it comes to status, race, or sexuality. We are remembering these 22 black celebrities and well-known figures who died from AIDS as a celebration to the legacy they left behind. Tennis legend Arthur Robert Ashe Jr. began playing tennis as a child in his hometown of Richmond, Virginia when he was just seven years old. He won three Grand Slam titles during his career and retired with 818 wins. He was the first black tennis player to win the U.S. Open, the Australian Open, and Wimbledon. He was also the first black tennis player to be selected to play for the United States Davis Cup team in 1963, and after his retirement in 1979, he coached the team to two titles. In 1988, he abruptly began to have difficulty moving his right hand. X-rays showed a mass in the left side of his brain that doctors immediately surgically removed. The mass was uncommon and usually seen in those that were immune compromised. With further testing, it was discovered that Arthur was not only HIV positive, but had developed AIDS. It is believed that he contracted the virus from a blood transfusion he received during his second heart surgery in 1983 when there weren't yet tests to check the blood supply for certain contaminants. Arthur kept his medical condition private until a newspaper informed him of its intention to run an article about the illness that he was hiding from the public. On April 8, 1992, he held a press conference announcing that he had AIDS. He also admitted to have known since 1988. Arthur Ashe died on February 6, 1993. He was 49 years old. David Cole was a co-founder of the legendary music group CC Music Factory, which became a worldwide sensation in the early 90s. The group is best known for their hit singles, Gonna Make You Sweat, and Here We Go, Let's Rock and Roll. On January 24, 1995, at the age of 32, it was announced by a band member that David had died after a long battle with spinal meningitis. It has been speculated by other members of the music industry that he died of complications from AIDS, but currently no proof exists. Mariah Carey released the single One Sweet Day featuring Boys to Men on November 14, 1995 in David's memory. Eric Wright, better known by his stage name Eazy-E, is widely regarded as one of the founders of the gangsta rap group NWA that formed in the late 80s. As long as it's violence, this is gonna be rap music, gangster rap music, or whatever. In 1995, Eazy-E was rushed to Cedars sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles after suddenly collapsing to the floor while rehearsing music with some of his group members. Following comprehensive tests during his time in the hospital, it was discovered that he was suffering from AIDS-induced pneumonia. He died a month later on March 26th. We all know Bobby DeBarge for being the lead singer of the R&B group Switch and for being the eldest brother of the infamous DeBarge family. He is also known far and wide for his unique falsetto vocals. At the age of 15, Bobby was introduced to heroin which eventually became his addiction and took a tremendous toll on his music career. In 1988, he was arrested and served time in prison for drug trafficking charges. While incarcerated and bearing an uncontrollable cough, Bobby tested positive for HIV. After finishing a five-year sentence and being released from prison in 1993, his wellness began to decline. He continued to record and work on music, but his health plummeted and he was placed in hospice by family members. Bobby died of AIDS on August 16, 1995, when he was 39. Kenny Green was the lead singer of the 90s R&B group Intro, who wrote and produced most of the group's songs. The group was discovered by the late Heavy D and is widely known for their hits Let Me Be The One, Ribbon In The Sky, and Come Inside. In 2001, during a phone interview while lying in a hospital bed, Kenny shared his health status with the world and confessed that he had AIDS. Three months later, on October 1st, he succumbed to the illness. He was 32. Gene Anthony Ray is best known as the tough, street-smart dancer Leroy Johnson in the 1980 film Fame. 
He was also cast in its television spin-off of the same name that aired from 1982 to 1987. Jean suffered a stroke in June 2003 and ultimately died from complications of the stroke five months later on November 14th in Manhattan, New York. Although he was HIV positive at the time of his death, it has not been revealed if his demise was caused by AIDS-related complications. He was 41 years old. Jermaine Stewart gained recognition in the 80s as a dancer on the musical variety show Soul Train, but he is famed for his biggest hit, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, from his 1986 album, Frantic Romantic. He died on March 17, 1997, due to AIDS-related health issues. He was only 39. His grave marker was left without a tombstone for more than 17 years, until a headstone was paid for by a fan in 2014. A once promising Major League Baseball player, Alan Wiggins, destroyed his career after developing an addiction to hard drugs. He played for the San Diego Padres and the Baltimore Orioles between 1981 and 1987. During his career, his struggle with drug addiction coupled with his erratic behavior eventually led to his indefinite suspension from the league. Soon after his dismissal, Allen contracted HIV through intravenous drug use. He died of AIDS on January 6, 1991, weighing less than 75 pounds. He was 32 years old. Wayne Cooper was the original lead vocalist for the funk band Cameo when Larry Blackman was just a drummer. The group formed in the 70s, and Wayne sang lead on the hits I Just Wanna Be and Why Have I Lost You. He died from AIDS complications on September 22, 1984, when he was 29. A modern dancer and choreographer, Alvin Ailey, founded the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in 1958 in New York City to present his vision of black culture through dance. His 1960 choreographic masterpiece, Revelations, is still recognized as one of the most popular and most performed ballets in the world. He died of an AIDS-related illness at age 58 on December 1, 1989. Chad Kinch was a professional basketball player for the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Dallas Mavericks from 1980 to 1981. He averaged 2.9 points per game in the one season that he played in the NBA. After leaving the league to cope with family issues, he developed a drug habit and eventually contracted HIV. He died from AIDS on April 3, 1994, at the age of 35. Franklin Seals is famous for his television roles as Lorenzo Hollingsworth on the 80s sitcom Amen and as business manager Dexter Stuffins on Silver Spoons. Dexter, something's bothering you and we're your friends, so why don't you talk about it? You feel a lot better. <sighs> well, my girlfriend really left me running for the plum. I just don't think I can go on. <laughs> in 1987, he developed a persistent cough on the set of Amen when the show was in its first season and had been unable to work regularly for the last three years of his life. On May 14, 1990, at only 37 years old, Franklin died from complications of AIDS. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered in the Caribbean Sea. Howard Rollins' groundbreaking role in the 1984 box office hit A Soldier's Story as Captain Davenport led to his role as Virgil Tibbs on the television crime drama In the Heat of the Night, which was based on the 1967 film of the same name. I have trouble dealing with your authority sometimes. So. The series began airing in 1988, and from its onset, Howard struggled with drug addiction. Due to his endless personal and legal issues, he was dropped from the series at the end of season six and replaced by Carl Weathers. In the fall of 1996, he was diagnosed with AIDS and died six weeks later. In 2006, a wax statue of Rollins was unveiled at the Senator Theater in Baltimore. The statue is now housed at the Great Blacks and Wax Museum. Kevin Peter Hall became popular for his roles in the 1987 science fiction film Predator and its 1990 sequel. He also starred in the comedy film Harry and the Hendersons, and later reprised his role in the first season of its television adaptation. The 7-foot 2-inch actor was married to actress Elena Reed, who played Olivia Robinson on Sesame Street and Rose Lee Holloway in the 80s sitcom 227. In 1990, Peter was involved in a life-threatening car accident and received a blood transfusion during surgery for the injuries he sustained. Soon after the transfusion, he was diagnosed with HIV and died from AIDS-related pneumonia on April 10, 1991, a month shy of his 36th birthday. 
Gil Scott Heron was known for mixing poetry and music to make powerful lyrical content. Among his greatest hits is the popular 70s track, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, a politically and socially charged song that examined the condition of black people in America at that time. In a 2008 interview with New York Magazine, Gill revealed that he had contracted HIV after years of abusing drugs and alcohol. He died on May 27, 2011 at a New York City hospital. The exact cause of his death is currently unknown. He was 62. Ascarita was an incredible pianist, R&B singer, and songwriter, well known for his frenetic performances and for inspiring rock and roll legend Little Richard. Some music lovers even advocate that Escarita is the true originator of rock and roll. He died of AIDS on October 23, 1986. Max Robinson is noted as the first black news anchor in the United States. In 1969, he joined the Eyewitness News team for Channel 9 in Washington, D.C., but instantly gained global attention in 1978 when he became an anchor for ABC News and World News Tonight. Economic news today, the index of leading indicators, which is supposed to indicate the direction the economy is heading, rose 1.4% in February. That's the sixth month in a row it's gone up. In December 1987, Robinson learned that he had AIDS after being hospitalized for pneumonia in Illinois. He and his family kept it a secret and requested that no details of his illness be released to the public, despite the multitude of widespread rumors about why his health was deteriorating. In the fall of 1988, while delivering a speech at Howard University, Max became increasingly ill. He checked himself into the university hospital, where he remained for months in critical condition. He died of complications due to AIDS on December 20th. He asked that his family reveal his AIDS diagnosis after his death so that others in the black community would be alerted to the dangers and the need for treatment and education of the syndrome. Larry Riley is well known to screen viewers for his role as C.J. Memphis in the movie A Soldier Story and as Frank Williams on the primetime television soap opera Knott's Landing. In 1990, after doctors confirmed that he was HIV positive, Larry stayed active and continued working while concealing his illness from the public. To explain his dramatic weight loss, he told his co-workers and friends that he was suffering from kidney failure due to high blood pressure. His true illness was revealed after his death by his wife Nina. He died of AIDS on June 6, 1992. He was 38. Sylvester, who gained the moniker the Queen of Disco, was known for his flamboyant appearance, falsetto voice, and for the disco classic You Make Me Feel Mighty Real. In 1985, Sylvester's boyfriend, Rick Cranmer, became aware that he was infected with HIV. His health deteriorated rapidly, and he died in 1987. Sylvester was devastated, and although recognizing that he too was probably infected, he refused to get tested, only to notice symptoms months later when he developed a cough that would not subside. Eventually diagnosed with AIDS, Sylvester became too weak to perform, but continued to give interviews to the media, being open about the fact that he was dying of AIDS. He passed away on December 16, 1988, at the age of 41. In his will, Sylvester declared that royalties from sales of his music be donated to AIDS charities. Charlie Barnett was a comedian that made a name for himself in the late 70s performing comedy in New York City. I love a New York audience! He is well known for his role in the 1983 film DC Cab as Tyrone and for his recurring role as Noogie on the television series Miami Vice. He died of AIDS on March 16, 1996, at the age of 41. Dave Chappelle has often cited Charlie as an influencer of his career. Willie Smith is considered one of the most successful young black fashion designers in fashion history. He died unexpectedly on April 17, 1987, at the age of 39, after being hospitalized for shigellosis and pneumonia. According to a statement released by his attorney, Smith's death was AIDS-related. Smith was apparently unaware that he had contracted the virus and had shown no symptoms. It was only after he was hospitalized that tests revealed that he was HIV positive. At the time of his death, his clothing company, Willie Wear Limited, had grossed over $25 million in sales. Sharon Redd was a singer, dancer, and a songwriter. She was born into a musical family and began singing at a young age. Red started her career as a background singer for various artists and later became a solo vocalist, releasing many disco hits in the early 80s, including Love How You Feel and In the Name of Love. 
she passed away on May 1, 1992 from AIDS-related pneumonia. While we may not have had a personal relationship with celebrities we've lost, we often feel a sense of connection to them through their work, their public image, and their impact on the culture. Coping strategies may involve finding ways to honor the celebrity's memory, such as watching their movies or listening to their music, participating in online or in-person memorials, or seeking support from other fans. It is also important to acknowledge that the grief and emotions surrounding the loss of a celebrity are valid and to give ourselves the space and time to process them in a healthy way. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more uploads like this one. Thanks for watching.